So, Sir Robert was, um, her other romantic love interest, which I was totally fine with letting him be that, until I found out that she was gonna become Queen of Tamriel, at which point I embraced the romance thing briefly, until I became Emperor, and then I went back to the friendship thing, so frankly, I don't know if I'm any better than this guy. Alright, what's up guys, it's Sarcastic Dragon here. So, I'm gonna try and do this review without a full script, because we, I've said before, I just don't do scripts very well. I have like a basic outline of my thoughts here, and I'm gonna try and uh, just kind of run through the mod while conveying my thoughts about this mod, but if that doesn't work, then I'm just gonna mute this audio and voice it over afterwards, and you're just gonna see the gameplay without this commentary. We'll see how it works out. So, I've, I've never really done a full mod review before. Um, the Parthenax is here, I don't know why. I don't know where that came, I don't think this mod had anything to do, I, I really have no idea why Parthenax is up there. I can't talk to him. Anyways, we're going into Cyrodiil, and we're just going to run around Cyrodiil while I while I tell you what I think of the mod Rigmore of Cyrodiil. Now, I'm going to start with the positives, because there's I only have one major problem with this mod, and it's gonna. but I'm going to be going on a bit of a rant about it, and I don't want people to think I hate this mod, because I don't. I really, really, really love this mod, and I am, like, s hyped for the, the sequel, Rigmore of Tamriel, alright? I'm hyped for it. But, there's one issue I have with this mod that I'm gonna address, and it's gonna be a bit of a rant, because it's gonna go on for a bit. So, we're gonna start with the positives. So, what is Rigmore of Cyrodiil, you ask? Alright, well, this is a sequel mod to Rigmore of Bruma. To my knowledge, they are both only available on PC. I don't believe they require SKSE, but I believe they're both exclusive to the uh, uh, the Nexus, so you can only get them on PC. And uh, before we get any further, there are going to be spoilers. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get into spoilers here. So if if you're if you're worried about that, then leave. But otherwise, let's let's get let's get right into it. So Rigmore of Cyrodiil is. Let's start with Rigmore of Bruma. Rigmore of Bruma is a quest mod in which you are given um, guardianship. Is that a word? I don't know. Whatever. It's a word now. Guardianship over a girl named Rigmore who is from the city of Bruma. Or something along. She's, she, she's related to the city of Bruma. Look, so here's the thing. For some reason, that mod has always broken my game whenever I tried it. Now, I don't want... Because, like... When... I'm not saying that this mod author has done this. I don't know. I haven't really seen anything from this mod author in terms of, like, responses to stuff. But I've seen a lot of mod authors get really defensive whenever someone says that their mod broke someone's game. And they'll always be like, no, it didn't. Here's the thing. It, it might have. Now, it's, I don't think anyone would deny that Rigmore of Bruma is capable of doing that just because it's such a large mod. But, um... Like, like dude, like, e the, the simplest things can break Skyrim. Like, e if someone... You, like, you're like... No, my mod didn't break your game. It might have, dude. Like, my loading screen mod broke someone's game once, and it crashed every time. Like, there's no reason it should have, but it did. It just it just happens. It's Skyrim. Anyways, that's not that's not really relevant here. Um, so I've never been able to finish Rigmore of Bruma. I've only been able to get what I assume is probably halfway, maybe, through the quest line. Uh, for those who have played it, um, the point where it always just breaks to the point where I can no longer do it is when uh, you meet up with... In, uh, Ingle, Yingle, Yingle in the, like, in the Windhelm region, and you're setting up a camp or something along those lines there, that's always around the time where it just becomes so glitched out and laggy that I can no longer play the game. Um, so that's always where I've had to stop on that mod. And because of that, I've had no context for a lot of the things in this mod, so there's a lot of things they talk about where I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Now, I'm not gonna pass any judgment on the story for that, because I, I, that's just... I don't understand what's going on. Um, so with all of that aside, the storyline is very, very good. It's very in-depth. The characters are focused on a lot. There are a lot of dialogue scenes that are very, very lengthy. Um, and, uh, I mean, yeah, you they, they really take their time with this. Like, a lot of times you have to escort people places, too. And, uh, I didn't realize I was wearing this armor. Uh, it's the Daedric Reaper armor, if you weren't aware. Um, alright, so, the storyline is, uh, 
I don't really know how Rigmore of Bruma ends, but um, it ends with her going back to Bruma and you moving on. So this takes place four years later. Um, I mean, it doesn't advance the game forward four years. I did it in the console so that it went, it went to the proper time period. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Um... You reunite with Rigmore. She, she doesn't get. You, she sends you letters over the years, and they 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 never get delivered to you. But your character doesn't tell her that until like in the epilogue, and so she's really mad at you about it and everything. But I digress. Um. All right, where where should we get in? All right, so right off the bat, this mod adds the entirety of Cyrodiil. Um, it's it's fairly bare bones. It's not nearly a, like. A lot of the buildings you can't go inside. Um, what, uh, for example, uh, Cloud Ruler Temple. It's a fairly important location. You know, Blades Temple from Oblivion. You can't go inside of it. Um, you can just walk around the outside of it, um, which is fine. It doesn't. Uh, I mean, it, it does. It's it's fleshed out for what it needs to be in. Oh, it puts you inside if you fast travel here. But. As you can see, there is no interior, at least as far as I can tell. But, and yeah, it definitely doesn't look like there's meant to be. So, alright, so what's the basic premise of this mod? So, you are called back to Cyrodiil to escort Rigmore here to the Imperial City to sign a decree. Because, um, the Emperor, who was killed by you, but they don't know that. They don't know that you killed him, because, you know, Dark Brotherhood. They don't know that you did that, but Emperor's dead. Um, and after that, a Bandit King took over Cyrodiil, and um, pretty much made it official. And Rigmore's signature is needed to um, allow him to claim the title of Titus Mead III, I think. Um, and, uh, but the issue is, the, the, the trouble is that Rigmore is a descendant of Titus Mead I. Um, she's like a bastard child. That's the official term, all right, people? I, I didn't make that up. Um, so she's... Um, so her family and uh, friends are concerned that they are... That the uh, Bandit King and his wife, who is a daughter of Cold Harbor, they are worried that she, uh, they are aware of this and are afraid for her safety um, in uh, her going to the Imperial City to sign this document, um, and they don't know that for sure. For all they know, it might just be that they really just want, uh, Rigmore to sign the document so he can be Titus Mead III and whatever. But they want to make sure, so they call for you, the Guardian General. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you are brought back to, um, escort her to the Imperial City to sign the decree, and things go awry and such and such, and, yeah. Now! Uh, characters. Let's start with let's start with the, the titular Rigmore. Let's go. You know, no, we'll we'll leave her out for now because uh, yeah, you'll see. Now I have not explored a large portion of this mod because this mod keeps you busy, and unless you want to break the immersion and just leave, because like Skyrim quests, a lot of them they're not like timed. Like, I mean, like you you've got like the Sovngarde quest and stuff like that. Like you're like Odving sitting there waiting on the balcony of Dragon's Reach, you could just leave for like a year and then come back and he'd still be waiting there for you, right? So like there's no real time constraints on Skyrim quests, but unless you want to break the immersion, this game keeps you busy pretty much constantly. So I haven't had time to like go to any of the cities other than the ones that were required of me for the quests. So we're going to go to... I don't know. Kvatch? Go to Kvatch. So, look, I'm not really sure if I can go much further into this without voicing my main complaint with this mod. Now, again, this is going to be a bit of a rant because I have a lot to say about it. I want to, again, stre- It's a rabbit. I want to, again, stress I do not dislike this mod in any capacity. I love it, alright? It's great. The storyline, it probably took me longer than both the- than all three of the DLCs in Skyrim combined. Or, well, you know, like, a base game, com vanilla campaign, Dawnguard campaign, Dragonborn campaign. It probably took longer than all those combined. With that said, it is definitely lengthened by the fact that it makes you sit through a lot of really long dialogue scenes. Um, but, uh, again, very fleshed out story. The problem with it is it is so unbelievably linear. By which I mean, 
at no point during this entire questline or the epilogue expansion, at no point during any of this did I feel as though I had any influence over what was going on. I felt like I was just reading a script. It, it, like, I felt like I was reading a script in the play. I didn't feel like I was actually going on a quest. Because it does not give you any options for anything. 95% of the time, there aren't even dialogue options. It just gives you one response option. Um... Uh, the only real choice it gives you is whether or not you are to marry Rigmore. And you would think that that'd be a big choice, but it's not. And this is this is where this is where it kind of gets to where I kind of disliked part of the mod because when I played Rigmore of Bruma, the parts that I was able to play at least, at no point did I ever get the impression that there was a romance thing going on between my character and Rigmore. I thought it was strictly you know, guardian, protector, big brother kind of thing. It, but apparently, the game, the mod really wants there to be a thing between you and Rigmore, because it pretty much shoves it down your throat. Um, um, and it's like to the point that if you staunchly refuse to take the romance route, it kind of just pretends that you did and thinly disguises it as something else. Um, so... Here, here's an example in the uh, Dragon Child epilogue expansion, which just came out in uh, in like mid December, I believe. Um, if you agree to marry her, you go to the chapel in Bruma, you exchange vows, give each other rings, and Rigmore wears a dress while she and everyone else talk about how much you two love each other. All right, so far so good. If you refuse to marry her, as I did, because I just never felt that there was anything like that going on. Um, then instead you will go to the chapel for a friendship ceremony in which you will exchange vows, give each other rings, and Rigmore wears a wedding dress while she and everyone else talks about how much you love each other. And, like... <sighs> so, like, I mean, to all the people who did choose the romance route, who did want to marry her, I'm sure that whole scene was awesome. It was, it was really you know, like, it was really fleshed out. I'm sure that was an awesome scene to anyone who was into that. But for those of us, or at least for me, who didn't want to marry Rigmore, the entire thing was just really awkward and uncomfortable. Like, I was kind of just, like, sitting there waiting for it to be over. Um, so, that brings us in to the next part of why it claims that some sort of union is so necessary between you two. And so the whole impregnation thing. Again, I get that it's going to be essential to the uh, next mod and stuff like that, and I'm really interested to see how it turns out. But the way they went about it was just really bizarre. Where am I? Alright, we'll go to Skingrad instead. That's a little closer. Um, okay, so... She gets pregnant with your kid. Now, you would expect maybe some sort of drunken passion fling thing to happen, though admittedly, I don't know how that would work if your character was female, which is another thing. I mean, maybe it would work different if your character was female, but given how few choices it gives you, I kind of imagine it would the quest would play out the same way, whether or not your character was female. So if you have a female character and you play this mod, I would assume you kind of just have to be okay with marrying a, a, a girl. If otherwise, it's just going to be a really, really awkward experience for you, I assume. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's that's what I'm guessing based on what I've seen of the mod, is that it would be the same. Um, so anyways, how does she get pregnant? Okay, so here's what happens, right? You're going to Hammerfell to uh, stop stop the daughter of Cold Harbor lady, because she wants to do something with Molag Ball and bring Cold Harbor to Tamriel, so like, the stakes are pretty high. Um, and you're on your way there. And you stop to rest and, uh, and you know, take a break because, you know, you've been hiking through the mountains and stuff. You need to, you need to rest. And uh, you and Rigmore go down to the stream where she decides to bathe. And down there, you find a shrine of Mara. And when Rigmore touches the shrine of Mara, it, 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 it explodes. And I mean, like, violently explodes like you both both you and rigmore get sent into ragdoll mode and it takes out like half your health bar like it blew up all right and so this explosion impregnated her with your child 
and you don't have a choice in this regard, as far as I can tell. She got impreg exploded. <laughs> so, look, I'm okay with that because it's it's strange. It is, but I understand that if you needed to worm that in somehow, I mean, at least it's different. But, um, it also really kind of also goes to further kind of shove the whole re romance thing down your throat. Um, and it just comes off as being really, really pushy. Um, one thing that really stuck out to me during the Dragon Child expansion, the epilogue, that you you and her go to um, an inn in Cyrodiil that's off towards the Imperial City to relax as a vacation. And you get there, and she says something along the lines of, oh, we can share a room, or we can rent two separate rooms. But when you get there, and like, you, you that, that could have been a totally meaningless thing that didn't impact the story at all, but it could have just been a choice you had to give you some freedom. But when you get there, and she offers to buy you a separate room, your character instead insists that he is not going to leave her alone. At any, at all, even if they're in the next room. Dude, where's Skingred? Wait a minute, did I pass it? Um, alright then. Anyways, um, so I'm, I'm guessing Skingrad and Kavach are not actually a thing. Um, alright. So anyways, where was I? Right, the inn. So, uh, he, your character insists that he or she will not leave her alone. And then she she tries to insist that she buy you a room. And I really wanted to accept that. Like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll sleep in a separate room. Instead, your character is forced to insist that you and her platonically cuddle, assuming you went the friendship route, which I did. Um, again, like, if you'd gone the marriage route, then this would have been whatever. But, um, so, yeah, that was really, really strange. And there was an animation for it and everything, and, like, again, it forced you into it, and it's... I don't know, I just really did not like that. And what further kind of exacerbates my issue with the fact that you have so little say in what, go in what happens, is at the end of the mod, you become the Emperor of Tamriel. Which is ironic, because you get to make, like, no decisions on anything. I don't, I don't feel like I'm the Emperor. Like, I walk around the palace and they call me Majesty, but that's about it. And so, I mean, you don't get to change the ending, you don't get to change which characters live or die, you don't even get to change which characters like or dislike you. Now, to an extent, I get that. I get if you want to have a fixed storyline. That's fine. It's just, this was so rigid in how it made you go about it that it really did not feel all that interactive. And I think... I personally think the mod suffered for that. With that said, I'm really interested to see where the mod goes next with the next uh, with the sequel because it's setting up an Akaviri invasion of Tamriel, which sounds fucking awesome. Now, where is he? Where's Conehead? Where's Conehead Elf? He's here. He's still alive. I guess el the elves live a really long time. I guess, but he's still like a man child. Where is the elf? Where's the Adoring Fan Elf? Balin. Was that ever officially his name? I thought he was just called the Adoring Fan. I don't know, dude. I didn't finish Oblivion. Um, he's supposed to live around here. That's what Rigmore said. I mean, he was also at my uh, friendship ceremony. He was there. Which was kind of kind of cool, I guess. And I don't remember what the original voice actor sounded like, but whoever voice acted him in this was pretty, pretty great. Like, they really got the awkward, socially inept. He, he, he's great. He, I really liked him. <laughs> I liked him, but I didn't like him. So this is the inn where you're forced to cuddle with uh, Rigmore in the expansion. This is also where you see her for the first time uh, at, after not seeing her for four years or whatever. Um, so, let's go meet some of the characters. So, the expansion... Uh, epilogue, ep epilogue expansion. It's pretty sizable. It, like, Rigmore of Cyrodiil itself is, I 
I think 1.2 gigabytes compressed. Maybe it's 1.7, I'm not sure, but it, it's a pretty large mod, and the epilogue is also pretty large at around 650-ish megabytes compressed. Um, I don't know how compressed, but compressed. Um, but it's not nearly as long. Which, again, it's fine. It's an epilogue. I don't have an issue with any of the overall storyline, except for the fact that it really doesn't let you do anything that it doesn't want you to do. Um, so we'll go in here and, and we'll, we'll, we'll meet some of the characters real quick. I, I still don't know where Balin is, and I'm upset about it. I know there's a console command I could use to figure it out, but then I gotta figure out his ID, and... Look, I don't want to find Conehead that bad, alright? So, who's all in here? So, yeah, this was another awkward scene. So, like, after the friendship ceremony, there was, like, a... There was, like, a, a, a whole, like, dinner thing in here. And, like, I had to sit there and talk... I had to sit there and talk about how... Or, no, and not... No, I didn't talk. I just kind of sat there, and everyone just... They said wedding things. Like, it, they... They didn't say marriage specifically, but they just talked about it like like we just got married. And so that's more of that. And so it ends with Rigmore having the baby, which, I mean, it was, it was a little odd because, like, assassin, like, you had to fight off waves of assassins. Like, it was like a boss wave thing while she was giving birth, and you're, like, waiting for assassins to come in, and you just hear her screaming in the background, and, like, I don't know, it was strange. Dude, did they ever clean up the, the mercenary? They did. All right, that's good. So you've got the baby here. Um, you can carry her around. Like, I had to pick her up at the end, and then it put me through the credits, and I was like, and then I just, it, it ended, and I was just still holding the baby, and I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do with this? Do I, I was like, can someone take this from me, please? And then I was like, okay, can I just, can I just put her back? I can, all right, cool. So, <laughs> yeah, bye. Uh, anyways, you, uh, you also don't get any say on her name. Like, they, they don't give you multiple options, which I think would have been kind of nice. Alright, can we stop with the baby crying noise, please? Alright. So, Rigmore was there asleep. I, I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave her there. Uh, we'll go down to the prison and see Sir Robert. So, Sir Robert was um, her other romantic love interest, which I was totally fine with letting him be that. Until I found out that she was going to become Queen of Tamriel, at which point I embraced the romance thing briefly until I became Emperor. And then I went back to the friendship thing. So frankly, I don't know if I'm any better than this guy. But, <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, he was totally, he, he, he went, he went, you know, he's, he's your villain. One of them, at least. He went in it, he was in it for the, uh, for the, the power. I mean, you should have seen it coming, dude. He's got, he, like... Anyone with a face that tiny in proportion to their head has to be a bad guy. And I really wanted to come in here and gloat at how I'm the Emperor now, but it won't let me talk to him. It said something about dealing with him, but it hasn't let me do anything yet. I mean, maybe I could just... What is this spell? Well, I think this is... I think this is for Marisi. Yeah. I like Marisi. She's adorable and I love her, alright? weird cat girl though she is she's endearing and I, 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 she grows on you so can I don't know maybe can I just can I just can I just oh, I could but that's not nearly as satisfying I don't feel like I just yeah, I don't no that like there, there's no way I need to gloat or something I can't just kill him and leave it um so here we'll go back through now and I'll show you my favorite part of the quest line because it was badass so, you and Rigmore and everyone, you're, you're getting into a war at this point. Again, it's pretty complicated. The storyline is very intricate. Um, but you get in... Bruma gets into a war with, uh, you know, the, the, the whole of Cyrodiil. And me being me, I annihilate everything. Uh, so, this is the final battle. And it takes place over a good portion of the map. Like, it's from here all the way down to here and up to here. So, I mean, it's a it's a very large... I mean, it, it dwarfs, like, the end of the Civil War battle in Skyrim. And it feels pretty chaotic, all things considered. Like, I mean, you can't... 
I mean, given how... I mean, like, you can only have so many NPCs and stuff like that. Given those restrictions, they... they it, it is a very cool battle. It doesn't help... It doesn't... I mean, it helps that I also got to try out a lot of my powers. Like, dude, I got... Like, the storm call shout? I never really liked it because of how indiscriminate it was. And then I found a mod that makes it not discriminate, so it only hits your enemies... And now I understand why Bethesda felt they had to gimp it in some way. I still think they could have just, like, made it do less damage or something. Because now I just don't want to use it at all. If, if it's, um... Uh, if it's just gonna kill my allies. Um... Uh, but, I digress. I also... Here. I'll just show you. This is what happens when it only attacks your enemies. Like, dude, it's like... You ever seen Iron Man? Like, the first one in the MCU? And, like, there's that scene where, like, he's attacking, like, those people who are taking the villagers hostages, and they're, like, all using them as human shields, and then those things come out of his shoulders, and they fire bullets that only hit the bad guys, and they go around all the villagers that were hostages. It's like that, but instead of bullets, it's lightning strikes. It's really overpowered, and I love it. I mean, I can kind of just walk around here and do whatever I want, and... But... That, that isn't really part that, that isn't part of this mod at all that's just that's just something that um i mean it lasts a long time too it's like three minutes or something if you use all three words it it, it, it goes on for a while uh it is it is ruthless so yeah you fight your way straight up all the way up till uh up till you get to the imperial city and then uh they surrender you go in the Bandit King insists that all his guards kill you. The Royal Advisor Chancellor tells them not to. And then he attacks you. Like, Rigmore was supposed to do something. And then, I don't know why, but she, like, vomited on the floor. I guess she, it was nervousness or something, I assume. But she vomited on the floor. And then the Bandit Emperor, Cepheus, or Titus Mead III, what he wanted to be, um, he... Uh, took the opportunity to attack you, at which point you kill him, and the rule is apparently he who takes off the head of the crown reigns supreme. So you killed him, you are now emperor. And uh, that is how you end up the emperor. Um, and then she becomes high queen, which is another thing. She becomes queen regardless of whether or not you take the romance route with her, which, I mean, fine, I guess I can, I can get, I can, I can, I can over... I can just pretend that it's like an administrative thing, sort of like how I guess the president doesn't have to have a relationship with the vice president. I don't know, but <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a if that's an if that's a good comparison. But that's the only thing I can think of right now. So um, <laughs> I I mean that's that's pretty much the majority of what I have to say about this mod. I really just had to kind of gripe about the lack of options but overall it's definitely probably one of the best mods out there probably it, it, it it's 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 not legacy of the dragonborn to me but it's 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 really good so i guess i'll just end my my very poorly structured review there so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it maybe click subscribe or like it or comment say sarcastic dragon fuck you you should no, it's fine. It's fine. To each their own. Again, I love this mod. I just really... That's just one thing I did not like about it. But, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.